Welcome to Inside Cover. Inside Cover is West Florida Literary Federation's inside scoop on soon-to-be-released books. This show will feature works from authors, poets, and writers living in the Florida Panhandle. This first episode features Gulf Breeze author Jeannie Zokin, whose new book, Courage Without Grace, published by Red Adept Publishing, will be released on March 30th. Uh, welcome, Jeannie Zokin, author of Existence of Pity, who also has a new book coming out, Courage Without Grace, which is going to be released on March 30th. Uh, Jeannie, congratulations on your new book. Um, Thank today you. We're going to, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, so today <laughs> we're going to be talking about uh, the process of your writing, but first... We're going to talk about your book. Uh, so real quickly, can you briefly tell us what Courage Without Grace is about? Uh, no, and, and we don't want spoilers on this because obviously we want people to, to read your book. That's right. I'm not going to tell you the story. That's right. I'm just going to tell you what it's about. Well, um, Courage Without Grace is about Josie Wales, and she is 22 years old. She lives in Washington, D.C. It's 1983, so it's a throwback novel. She's a palm reader at a fancy hotel and she goes there during tea time and she's trying to correct um, a problem from her past. Um, but instead of correcting it, she keeps getting into more trouble. But um, so the, the themes of the book are of grief and loss, but also acceptance and motorcycles. <laughs> oh, motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, she's a motorcyclist. Oh, very cool, very uh, cool. That you know, that's, that's how you, you can grab, grab, especially guys and grab our attention, yeah. there, right? I know you drift off. Oh, motorcycles. Yeah. Motor, motorcycles. <laughs> motorcycles are good. <laughs> um, so that this, I mean, so far it sounds good. I mean, throwback. Thank you. you know, I'm throwback excited. to the 1980s, you know, uh, a lead protagonist is female that rides a motorcycle. You know, that's, that's great. That's going to be pretty awesome. I think. Uh, can you tell us where our listeners can get a copy of this book? They can get co a copy as of on March 30, you can get a copy um, at Amazon.com, of course, BarnesandNoble.com, um, Kobo Books and Google Play. Those are all online um, booksellers that, and that's where you can get them. Um, or you can contact me directly and I'll send you a book. We'll have to figure that out. Maybe find me on Facebook. Well, I was going to say, speaking of which, let's, we can go ahead and put the, what they refer to as the shameless plug right now. The shameless uh, we, plug. The shameless plug. Uh, what, what email address can they find you at? An email address would be um, tricky name, Jeannie O. Zokin at gmail.com. And Jeannie is spelled J-E-A-N-N-I-E -N -N -E, as in I dream of Jeannie. So Jeannie O. Zokin at gmail.com. That's easy enough to remember. And, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and throw that within our show notes here uh, down Great. at the bottom so we can link that up for you, if that's okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. If not, we can, we can direct our listeners to, uh, or listeners and viewers to your Facebook if you want to go that way too. Always, always yeah. a Facebook. Yes, fun to see people there. Absolutely. So here's what we got. There are two kind of novelists, people who write from the seat of their pants, which we call pantsers. That's right. That's right. <laughs> who are sort of uh, discovery writers. And then there are writers who plan everything and work uh, with outlines and detailed charts. What kind of writer are you? And uh, oh, wow. Nick, I'm a pantser. I'm a pantser, Nick. That's what I love to do. I love to just sit down and see what happens. It's my, it, it, I, I, the last thing I want to do is, is, uh, um, make a chart or a graph or an outline ah, but I know it's a great way to do it also but my joy in writing is just the discovery of what whatever I've comes to me so that's I'm definitely a pantser and sometimes it works out but sometimes it does not so you know it, it, it's definitely when you kind of more methodically write um I think you're you have more of a chance of your idea making it whereas with a pantser you have lots of different ideas you know and you just go with all of them and i i'll be i'll be like typing and i'll say research this here in big bold letters and i, and I go back to it and research and see if it's something that's feasible or possible or how that would have worked out but that's what a pantser does <laughs> now would, would you say with your your first book the existence of pity 
were, was that a pantser or did you actually have, were you outlined on a chart with that kind of, or was you no, by the no, scenario? that, that was definitely a, pan as a matter of fact, that was more of a pantser novel than this one, the second one, because the first one, it started out when I first started writing it, it was different. It was, I had a different idea in mind and, and then suddenly it just went a totally different direction and I loved the way it went. I'm, I'm really happy with it, but wow, it wasn't what I expected. And that's what you have to do um, is just be ready. And that, I think that's why I like to be a pantser is because I, there's more possibilities um, and uh, because you, you have to be ready for anything and, and something big can come along um, that can really make you excited about writing and give you the passion more than I, more than a, than the plotter, you know, I, I like the passion of writing. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. yeah that, so, <laughs> with, so when, when it came with, with the new one with courage without grace, you, would you say you were a little bit more structured compared to the first one? And, and when I say a little bit, almost more of like less than 5% more structured. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely more structured. And I'll tell you why, because even though um, Courage Without Grace is a standalone novel. You can read it without having read Courage Without Grace. I mean, um, um, Existence of Pity. You can read Courage Without Grace first, and but they both have the same characters. It's a, both about Josie and her, her life. The first book is about when she's 16, she's living in Columbia, South America. Now the second book, she's in Washington, DC as a palm reader. And so, um, the reason why I had to be much more structured the second time around was because it's already based on these characters. They, they can't suddenly be different people, you know, so I had to really structure who they were and, and how that, how they would interact with each other. So yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, okay. absolutely more structured the second time around. Now, going back to the first book, is that more kind of semi auto, you know, autographical? Autobiographical? Yeah. Oh, yes, they both are. They both oh, okay. are, absolutely, yes. Because I, I grew up in Columbia, South America um, and my parents were missionaries. And then I moved to uh, Baylor University, went to college, then I moved to Washington, DC. And so I skipped those oh. college years. Oh, you skipped the college years. They, they were <laughs> surprising, I know, surprisingly, they were not fun at all. So I, I was, yeah, I, I skipped those years to write about. I kind of do flashbacks about those years for Josie. Um, but yeah, and then my, my situation, you know, grew, I moved to DC and basically what I did was I created um, the, the, the scene, I set the setting of something I knew very well because I loved Columbia, I moved to DC, I didn't love, I love Texas, Texas is awesome, I know you're a Lone Star man, <laughs> but Look at the horns, you know it, yeah. <laughs> hey, sick of bears! <laughs> But, um, but I moved to, you know, moving to Washington, D.C., I just, it's such a, a beautiful, our capital is gorgeous, and um, back in the 80s, it just was a lovely, lovely place to live, until it got too cold. I think that's awesome that you're able to do, you know, the, these characters based out of those two areas that you were living in, because not many people, you know, live in other countries or grow up right. in other countries, especially Colombia. Right. I mean, I, I know, know that, that here in America, at least when I was a kid, there weren't great things coming out of Columbia that you only, yeah. that's all you heard about. And then when you get older, you're like, wow, it's a beautiful area. That's, you know, the people are great. The people are nice. Oh, so excellent. It's, that's yeah, so true. It's kind of, so I mean, true. It, it was such a great time in my life. And I do, I love exactly what you're saying. I love to share um, the beauty of Columbia, but I will tell you, this is not a spoiler. I will tell you that um, in the second book, somebody gets kidnapped <laughs> so i know that's pretty typical sadly that's pretty typical of, of columbia in the 80s nowadays columbia is very safe and and you know beautiful they love to have people there and, and come visit so yeah so it's, it's changed a lot but yeah there's a you gotta have a if you're talking about columbia in the 80s you gotta have a kidnapping you know? what i enjoyed so much about using my setting was how i could you know, really use truth, you, you know, no, knew what I was talking about. I mean, they always tell you, write what you know. And so mm -hmm. for me, it was my truth, you know, these beautiful places. But I immediately took a tangents with these characters. You know, a lot of the things that happened to Josie did not happen to me. Well, yeah. for, our, for our listeners and viewers that are out there that uh, maybe haven't done a novel yet, or they're attempting to a novel, or they're finished with a novel, 
but they haven't done any of the editing yet on it. Can you tell us a little bit about the editing process? Well, I mean, it's going to be different for everybody. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically, you know, you're going to want to do your own editing. You're going to want to look over what you've written and, and kind of, you know, a lot of things will jump out at you just because you kind of tend to, most people tend to write in kind of a flurry, you know, you just, and then you're going to look back on the whole thing later and do your own editing. And then everybody should find somebody that they trust that's not too mean, you know, <laughs> some, some nice person who, who understands writing that will look at it for them and kind of edit it for them, whether they pay that person or it's just somebody they, that, that, you know, they, they know. I'm so fortunate because I'm part of a group called West Florida Literary Federation. And one of the best things about this group is that we get together, different people get together in critique groups and we critique each other's work. So I would take a chapter a week for, oh, I don't remember how many months it was. I think it was nine months, one chapter every week. And then I do it. Oh, I need to redo that chapter. I'm sending it again, you know, and they helped me so much. These, these writers and, you know, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised somebody who's, whose love is mystery or whose love is, you know, horror or, or, or memoir, whatever they didn't matter. They're a reader. They love to read. They want to read something good and interesting. And everybody was helpful to me in one way or another. By the time um, things had shut down and we weren't able to go in person, um, I was already in a stage where I was working with um, my editor with my publishing company. And my publishing company is Red Adept Publishing. And they um, have two editors. One is called a um, content editor and she was super helpful. She would just look over the whole storyline and give me suggestions and, and um, get, you know, give me ideas and tell me how to fix things. Um, and then the other person was the line edit. And that was just like literally the line by line, you know, commas and, and wait a second, I think you already said that, or, you know, what does this mean? Or, you know, that sort of thing. So super helpful to edits. And that's what I've been doing this past year um, because it takes a long time. You know, it's a, it's a cue you get in <laughs> and then you crush your fingers. But um, yeah, so, but I'm finally through it all through the queue, got my cover, which I love. It's so beautiful. And, um, and so, yeah, so now the, the um, release date is right around the corner, March oh, 30th. Then. <laughs> that's exciting. That really is. It's, I mean, that's, and that's coming up pretty close. I mean, today's, today's March 12th. How do you come up with the ideas of your novels? How do you come up with okay. the and stuff like that and the characters? Okay. Well, we talked about the characters. Now, with, this is a secret, yeah. so don't tell anybody, oh, oh. but I hear voices in my head. So I don't think I'm alone in that, but I literally hear conversations and I type as fast as I can to get those conversations down and I, um, I don't think, I think a lot of writers are the same way. They just start, a, a scene starts playing out in their heads and they're like, oh my gosh, I got to get that down. And so that's how the writer, right, the ideas come or, or, you know, I'll tell you something else too. Um, when I, when I first started the, well, I think the first book, my existence, the existence of pity I always get an image. It always starts with an image and the image is so powerful, so strong that I can literally like know that I can build a story around it. And my first image, the, the, um, the book, The Existence of Pity, one of the things that happens is that Josie is a, is a Baptist missionary kid, but she's really drawn to this one Catholic church and it's called La Ermita. It's very beautiful. Here's a photo of it. And that image itself um, propelled me to write the story and see where it all went. Now, the same thing happened with Courage Without Grace, but a very different image. The image was um, just of Josie standing in the cold on a February night in front of her boyfriend's apartment. You know, back in the day, I mean, I suppose they're still there, but I don't know, but you would push a button and to let you in, you know, you'd push a button and it'd be an intercom kind of thing. And she's standing there. There's a lamp post right beside her. She's very conflicted. And, and, um, that's the opening scene of, of, um, Courage Without Grace. That's the, um, when Josie is, is presented is in that scene and I that's what I saw and that's what I built the story 
from there on. So that's how I got my ideas. <laughs> that that's I mean that's literally crazy, but you know, don't tell. <laughs> no, 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 no. And and that's it's pretty awesome hearing that and you setting the the mood, the tone for it because I am imagine that immediately in my head, you know, I I, I you can see her. It. Yeah. I can see yeah. her just sitting there, you know, shivering. You know, that's just right. how I how exactly. I see her, you know, cover and then looking down and then all of a sudden, you know, pushing a button, boom, story starts. Right, right. So Gene, what do you uh, what kind of advice do you have for new and upcoming authors? Well, um I suppose the best advice I could give is if you can not write, don't write. <laughs> Because the only reason most people write is they have to write. You, there's this driving need and it, it is kind of thankless. You know, I mean, it's so exciting on the day that, you, you know, you finally publish your book and it's, it's, it's wonderful to be at your desk in writing, but so much of the time it's just very, it's a hard, it's, a, it's, it's just tough. So if you, if you cannot write, then don't write. Just only do it if you have to put it that way. That would be my advice. But then, okay. But then here's the other part of my advice. I wrote this down because I thought this was going to be very exactly what I wanted to say. All right. So my advice is if you don't have to write, then don't write. But if you have to write, give it everything, give it everything. That is my advice. That, that's some really good advice. Completely use well, I don't know, it might be completely useless, but. <laughs> well, 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 I mean, I, I live I live by the mantra is if you're going to do do it, do it 110%. But I, I do believe, I think that's some, I think that's some great advice for new writers because I, I mean, I, I've seen, you know, I, I work with kids and stuff like that. And I see one yeah. writers and they start writing and then they get sidetracked and they stop. Right. And, and, and I too, or, you know, it requires, it requires, you know, to, it, it's so funny because on one hand, as a writer, you have to be so confident and so, you know, sure about what you're doing, but also as a writer, you have to be so vulnerable because you have to just be pre re ready to write anything down, whatever comes to you. And, and then, and I think young adults, like what, who you work with, that, that is exactly where they are. They're half the time, they're really confident. And then the other half, they're so scared of what others will think or you know and it, it's yeah if you can make it through all that i know someone one of the kids that i taught a few years ago was having a hard time uh they were writing but they weren't feeling comfortable about those themselves and i said well i i write and they're like what and i'm like yeah i, I write screenplays i i add on wow. to stuff i'm not i'm not good at all i'm not good at all and so it's so and i told them the story that i had in front of this entire class this is what I'm working on. And they all laughed at me and they said, are you, you know, are you crazy? Are you insane? I'm like, yeah, because to me, you know, that that's what it needs to be. And so this, this girl, exactly. like, this exactly. girl was pretty, after that, she was like, oh, okay. I shouldn't be afraid to write. Like, yeah, don't be afraid to write. It's, there it's, you go. Good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's it's, great. It's, fun. it's fun doing that. Yeah. And um, you know what, even that tiniest seed that you planted in her, that can grow you know oh, that yeah. can grow she's she she just needed that little bitty thing of yeah. just that little bitty encouragement yeah. so that's it's great okay. it's okay it's okay to be wrong Jeannie. now that you have finished uh courage without grace and it yes. is coming out on march 30th and we're going yes. to direct people not only to your website wait do you have a website I have a blogspot.com and I love to write blogs. So I've got years and years of blogs and, and you can just see all of the things I've gone through. It's, I, I love my blog. Yeah. Awesome. So it's it's um, blogspot.com. Excellent. And so we, we can start directing people toward, toward that area and also to Amazon and, and other places to get your books at. Great. With that being said, what is your next project? <gasps> well, I've got a, quite a few ideas. Um, so I, I, Diane and I have been working on something that, that um, she really loves and I do too. I love it. So it's kind of science fiction. So we're, it's very much a different, a t you know, different angle, which is kind of fun to do after, you know, you, you've done the same thing for a while. You want to try something new and different. So um, that, that's probably what I'll do. It's, I think for now, the working title is called The Continuum. So we'll see. The con no, wait, it's The Continuum Experiments. 
oh. the continuum experiments. So oh. yeah, so we'll see. That's my next project. We'll call it that. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of sci-fi <laughs> books. Just going to let okay. you know. Okay. So All right. I'll book. let you read it. You can be say, my editor. I, my I, editor. I, don't yeah don't let's don't do that <laughs> let's don't do that I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> i don't want to put you to work though you got plenty to do say, on your screenplay i've got to use diane as a proofreader for my stuff sir. <laughs> oh listen she's the best you've got the best absolutely man she, diane's awesome she uh can be honestly brutal sometimes and, and that's okay <gasps> well that's okay don't tell her but yeah it's true. yeah, yeah she can. but hey it's what it what you know she's right and at least for me the stuff i'm yeah. looking at, oh yeah oh right. yeah yeah so, i know i don't want to hear it but you're right sci-fi coming up this is going to be great it's going to be sci-fi next up that's right all right so so Jeannie, now that you have finished your book and you now have time to read other people's books yes what's the best new book you have read beside your own okay beside my own <laughs> um it's it's this book called by Kristen kimball and it's called the dirty life and it's so funny it's about a lady who well it's not funny it's intense it's about a woman who um goes uh meets this man who's a farmer and she becomes they get married and they have a farm and it's this huge farm and it's fascinating because i mean the whole idea of so much work and how much she actually gets out of the, the work. And then there's all of these aspects of, I don't eat a lot of meat. I'm not a vegetarian, but I don't eat a lot of meat. And she talks about the slaughtering of the pigs and, 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 and just how, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of the circle of life and, and, um, and it's, she talks about how beautiful the different seasons are and, and she's up in New York. So it's, you know, and, and she has this, one of the things that she does, she and her husband do is that they have, um, they feed from their farm. They feed, I don't know, like many, many families. I think it might be a hundred families, but from just their farm and they get maple, syrup for sugar and they get their the, all the meat products for a whole year every year these people and then the people can come and help farm you know if they want or they can just come and it's like a farmer's market kind of thing but it's all free to these people they just come and get what they want and it's it's you know she she talks about how she used to have nice clothing and she doesn't even bother with that anymore you know and but but her the the trade-off is such delicious food fresh from the ground from the earth you know and, and so it's, it's it's very different from any book i've read before you know and, and like i said it's called the dirty life by kristen kimball so i highly recommend it awesome it's, it sounds like it's actually fairly uplifting besides the title yeah. Yeah. yeah because it's i mean the title kind of like the dirty life like i know, you know I'm, I'm thinking I the, the, I know. The worse i'm thinking of stuff from columbia it's very catchy <laughs> you're like what <laughs> what yeah <laughs> oh that's great that's great all right so Jeannie's recommending the dirty life the that's dirty life Kristen kimball Kristen kimball's the dirty life uh, <laughs> recommendations from Jeannie Zokin. yeah that's right all right Jeannie, we are to the last question oh what was that this one is if oh. you are stuck on a desert island, desert island or deserted island, desert island, desert island, De deserted desert island, deserted There's desert nobody island, there. one on your own. tree with an oasis and coconuts. We'll just say you have food. Okay. We have, coconuts, food. Please. but you can only take three books with you. And we're going to go ahead and say that comic books or graphic novels are involved with this. Oh, they are. Okay. I know. Cause some, someone, it told me no, but I'm going to say graphic novels or novels, but okay. you might not be able to choose one of those. I don't know if you don't want to. Uh, no, uh, I don't know very many of those. Oh, we'll see. There we go. So we don't have to worry yeah. about it now. Uh, but which three novels would you take with you? Okay. Well, uh, you're not allowing how to's though, are you? No how to's. No how to's. No but how, -to's. how about, I, I would really really want to have a guide to edible plants i would need some sort of a guide to edible plants in a book form that would be great but uh, maybe that's my fourth book or something <laughs> but the the only book that just keeps coming back to me that i would really like to have 
is it's um, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And I think, have you read that book, Nick? Have I've you, heard I've, of it. I've never read it. You might really like that book. It's, it's, I've read it once a long time ago and I have wanted to, to read it again. Um, it's just, it's very rich. It's a very rich book, very dense. And one of the best parts about it is that it's nice and thick and it comes in paperback. So it would make a great pillow on the deserted island. Now the other, uh, the only, I can only think of another one that I'd have to have. And I have a, a, a picture of it. And it is Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Now that is an all time awesome book. That will make you laugh, it will make you cry, it will make you think. So those are my choices. And would I know you, your choice would be I, well, Bear Town, huh? I think Bear Town would definitely be one of my choices right now. Congratulations, Jeannie, on the new book. And Courage Thank you. Without Grace, again, going to be released on March 30th. And where are the places they can get it at, Jeannie? Barnesandnoble.com, Amazon.com, Kobo Books, Google Play. Awesome. So, and yes. And your email as well. And we'll we'll link everything down to the bottom in the show notes. So people Thank know you so much. Hold of you. So, it is uh, Jeannie, Jeannie's O Zoken at gmail.com. Jeannie O Zoken at gmail.com. That's right. West Florida Literary Federation thanks you for viewing this interview with this author. WFLF is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to encouraging authors, poets, and writers in preserving the literary history of West Florida. We offer programs, workshops, awards, critique sessions, contests, open mics, and book events for the membership and the general public. To learn more about West Florida Literary Federation, visit our website, wflf.org, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter at WSTFLITFED.